Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the goal of your paper and the consequent organization of that paper. So every paper that you write is essentially, at its heart, an act of communication. You're trying to get some specific message into the head of your readers. Uh, you're trying to, to reduce their uncertainty about something. Uh, basically, a good paper is going to answer some question. Now, importantly, uh, a, a good scientific paper is, is not the same as a textbook, which exists only to inform, or an advertisement which exists only to persuade, although a paper will have some elements of both. So the biggest difference uh, among these different types of writing is the sources of evidence selected. A persuasive paper, which is, again, not what we want, generally selects evidence based on whether the evidence conforms to the desired answer. Uh, a simply informative paper, on the other hand, looks at a wide variety of, of evidence, but it does very little with it. The scientific paper, on the other hand, takes the highest quality evidence dealing with you know, whatever the question is, and then whatever that evidence says, they critically engage it and try to make sense of it. Now, the persuasive paper may use a variety of appeals to achieve its outcome. Um, it may use emotional appeals, moral appeals, or even fallacious appeals or, or faulty reasoning. Any of these is totally appropriate in a persuasive message because the goal of a persuasive message is to change attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors. It's not particularly concerned with, um, frankly, with truth. It's only interested in, in change. Such approaches are, are generally not acceptable in a scientific paper. Uh, the scientific paper is interested in facts, in evidence, and what can logically and reasonably be inferred from that evidence. And that's all. So how is a scientific paper then structured? Well, logically, obviously. Now this isn't going to be the same for every paper because every body of evidence that, that uh, papers are dealing with is going to be, uh, is going to be unique. Instead, after evidence is gathered and thoughtfully analyzed, a structure should, should emerge. Uh, let's look at an example or two. So let's say my paper is addressing the question, does playing violent video games lead to aggression? So I look up research from lots of different sources and I find research studies that fall into a couple obvious groups. So first, I find a lot of laboratory experiments and, and surveys that conclude that Yes, playing these video games leads to aggression. Now, mostly, they measure aggression by having people like imagine being in situations that might lead to aggression and then writing down what they think they would do. Um, if they say they would be violent, hypothetically, in these situations, then that counts as aggression. Now, second, I find another group of studies in my search that concludes that no, there is no effect um, of playing violent video games on aggression. Most of these surveys ask young adults if they've ever been arrested or convicted of assault or battery or murder or some other violent crime. If they say yes, then that counts as aggression. If they say no, then, then not aggression. So if I'm writing a persuasive paper, I would just pick the side I wanted to argue, and then present only the evidence consistent with that argument. But I don't want to write a persuasive paper. Okay, writing a persuasive paper ultimately means ignoring some meaningful, substantial part of the evidence. It means saying, yeah, I'm just going to ignore half the, the proof, and ultimately, I'm not going to accurately describe the world around me. Right? Um, if I want to write a scientific paper, I'd probably present first one body of evidence and then the other and insightfully comment on the similarities and differences across those two groups. Um, in this case, obviously measuring aggression in fundamentally different ways makes a difference. I mean, think about it. Very few people, even very few aggressive and violent people, have ever been arrested for violent crimes. Many, many more people uh, doubtlessly think about being violent than actually engage in violence. 
So I may conclude that the two types of study are actually measuring fundamentally different things. One of them is measuring the tendency or likelihood of being violent, and the other one is measuring the actual um, sort of careless commission of violence, because it's not just violence, it's also getting arrested for the violence. Uh, or I might conclude that, that one group of studies was conducted with some fatal flaw that invalidates their conclusions. Um, I mean, that's, that's the part where I actually engage the material and, and think about it and show what my thought process is. But if I just systematically ignore one of them because I don't agree with it, then I'm, then I'm not writing a paper, I'm writing, a, I'm writing an advertisement, and that's not, that's not what we're interested in. All right, another example. Uh, so what if my question is, are there any beneficial effects of playing video games? Um, if I do the research on that, on that question, uh, I find a bunch of, of stuff, but it's, it's kind of all over the place. So for example, some research shows that playing certain video games can encourage cooperation. Um, some research finds that, uh, that, that playing video games, some video games, running and jumping kinds of video games might improve spatial awareness. Um, other research finds that uh, video games produce some, some educational benefits for children recently diagnosed with diabetes, right? They can learn to better control their diabetes and test their blood sugar and stuff like that. Um, other research finds that playing together with people in your family, especially much older or much younger people, um, can strengthen family relationships. So if I'm presented with this sort of all over the place body of evidence, what do I do? Well, the logical thing to do is to talk about the evidence by identifying some insight uh, that I can draw from all of the research uh, studies viewed together. So in this case, the, the, the common insight is that the benefits of video games really are determined by the specific content of the game and the specific context in which the game is played. Um, so if, I, if I'm playing the, the, the diabetes game, I'm not going to learn cooperation skills. Um, if I'm playing uh, all by myself, then I'm probably not going to feel closer to my family as a consequence of playing, right? The specific details matter. So I probably make a statement something like that as my thesis, right? My thesis is uh, the, the, the benefits or the beneficial effects of playing video games depends on the content and the context of the game. Um, and then I present each little uh, tightly related body of research in turn, right? So maybe I present all the spatial awareness stuff uh, together, and then I present all the diabetes or health-related stuff together, or maybe even all the learning stuff together and, and, and so on. And as I go, I'm describing how each little body of research findings is consistent with that central observation consistent with my thesis. Now, let me touch on just a couple common mistakes that people make so that, so that we can avoid them. Um, first, don't organize your paper by just writing a paragraph, summarizing each source, and then critiquing it at the end. Okay? If, if that's what you do, then you, you didn't write a paper, you created an annotated bibliography. Now, that's a thing, right? That's, you know, maybe that's an assignment in some other class. You know, there, there used to be books published that were just annotated bibliographies, but that was really mostly pre-internet, and now that's, that's not, really a, not really a thing. We don't really need it anymore. Um, so, so don't do it, right? Um, you want to start by putting meaningful uh, articles together, or, or even meaningful findings, even if they come from lots of different articles. Right? One article might have three or four findings and might show up at three or four different places in your paper, and that's fine. Right? Don't just, here's a summary, here's a critique, here's a summary, here's the critique, conclusion. That it doesn't fly. Okay? Second, don't skip around conceptually. Okay? Make sure that, that similar ideas are all together in your paper and that the order in which those ideas are presented makes sense. Okay, one thing makes me tear my hair out, well, you know, used to back when I had hair, 
um, was I'd, I'd see some some research finding referred to, you know, conceptual research finding referred to at the beginning of a paper, and then they talk about some other stuff, and then here at the end of the paper, it's back again because it was because it was in a different article, right? They're organizing their paper by the article or by who published it, not by the concepts. You need to organize conceptually, put like ideas together and make sure the order makes sense. A third, don't, don't make your reader guess why things are organized the way they are. Explain what you're doing first in the introduction and then continue to explain as you go through the paper. Um, so, you know, when you make, make a transition, you're like, well, I have been talking about the, the diabetes stuff and now I'm going to talk about the spatial awareness stuff. Don't just skip between those two because as a reader, I assume that because they're back to back, they must be connected. And that's just going to be confusing for the first several sentences. So instead you say, well, you know, so um, th these learning effects are one benefit. A completely different kind of benefit can be seen with whatever. Or um, not all researchers agree that this effect happens. Using different methods results in a different effect. Let me talk about that now. Okay. Ultimately, uh, the way you structure your paper conveys meaning in and of itself. Um, it can help you give a, a clear answer to your research question. It can provide insight. Or it can distract your reader and make it hard for them to understand. Organizing your paper thoughtfully makes for good writing.